Hello, I'm Simon Hansen and welcome to my series of videos on how to edit the Alesis Strike drum kit. First off, I'm going to give you an overview of the editing surfaces of the model. That's the buttons on the top. First thing you'll notice is the 4.3 inch colour screen where you can clearly see how, what, where, when and why you're editing. Especially if you're at a gig or a concert as they used to call them. Underneath that is the data wheel where you can scroll the drum kits and add data. More data please! Above that are four cursor arrows and an enter button. Oh yeah. To the left of these are 12 real-time faders or sliders, letting you individually edit each voice or instrument. You can have a louder bass drum or a louder snare at the touch of a finger, button, slider, fader. Above there, you'll see the transport buttons, like an old-fashioned tape deck, or as they used to call them, cassette deck. This is where you play back, record, and stop samples. Yes, it's a sampler as well. Woo! Above the transport buttons are the eight edit buttons, divided into two sections. One section is the utility section. This is where you can start the metronome, set the tempo for the metronome, go into utility mode, which affects global aspects of the unit, and you can also save your drum kits. When you alter a preset kit or you import a kit as a sampled kit, you can save them on an SD card. The unit comes with an 8GB SD card, but you can take that out and put one in up to 64 gigs. So there really is no limit on how many kits you have. No limit. No limit. The other six edit function buttons sit on the top left with a white line and the word edit between them. Note Chase, a wonderful system. Whilst this is activated, it allows you to hit a drum and the edit page for that drum will appear. When this is deselected, that page will stay and you can still hit other drums. You'll learn how brilliant that is. Mixer lets you see a digital representation of the sliders in digital form and backlit for gigs or concerts. Sample takes you into sample mode where you can record, playback, and mess around with samples you make. Kit FX is where you choose the effect which will go on each kit. There's a choice of two, and as Alesis are the absolute kings of digital effects, you know they're gonna be good. Voice is where you can go in, edit, choose the type of sound you want to come out of the drum, choose the pitch, choose everything, choose life, choose everything. Trigger mode is where you can adjust the triggers inside the drums to suit you and send a signal to the brain that matches your playing. Underneath the LCD screen are five function buttons numbered F1 to F5 with F3, 4 and 2 in between. Oh, and not forgetting F6. Whilst in edit, these function buttons let you jump to different edit pages, like on a computer or as they used to be called, a calculator. There are two swivelly knobs on the top of the unit. One is for the main output volume. This affects the stereo output on the back. It won't affect the individual outputs, which also don't have effects on them, so your sound man can do his thing. The other one is the aux input. This is where you can input audio for samples. It's also where you can put a cassette on, or a tape, or a CD, or an MP3, and play along to it. You can also record yourself playing along to yourself if you've recorded yourself to play along to yourself. And last and by all means least, there's a headphone socket. A good size quarter inch jack professional headphone socket with its own independent volume. You can also have the click only come out of the headphone and not out of the outputs. Loving that. So that's what everything does on the button front. See you soon. <laughs>